we are children of God. 1st John 3 verse 2 Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is one verse that will literally change your life. I mean, I could preach for 10,000 years and still not get to the bottom of this verse. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now we are the children of God. This means that you have a connection with God. It means that you are His. Nothing can separate this. We have all heard this statement that we are all God's children. No, we are not. This is one of the biggest lies out there right now. We are not all God's children. The Bible is clear about this. All people are God's creation. He created every single person on this earth. Colossians 1 verse 16 For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. But only those who are born again, only those who have gone through the process of the new birth, they are the children of God. John 1 verse 12 But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In scripture, the unbelievers are never referred to as God's children. But you hear people state, we are all God's children. You are a child of God if you have experienced the new birth. The new birth is not an act that separates us from God. The new birth literally means born of God. You are born from above. God is in you. God is now your father. He is your dad. Get that into your head. You are his child. Some people who have not had a good relationship with their earthly fathers struggle to understand this, a true father. The love of a father is different. It is different. I can't talk about the love of a mother. I have never been a mother, so I can't talk about the love of a mother. But let me tell you about the love of a father. The love of a father is different. I remember when I saw my first child born, I did not understand love until I looked into his eyes. My life changed from that second. The decisions I made were for him. When looking for a house, I thought of him. When going to work, I thought of him. Why did I do this? Because he is my child and I love him. The love of a father is so deep you can't get under it. So wide you can't get round it. So high you can't get over it. The love of a father is overflowing and this is the love of an earthly human father. One who struggles with sin. One who is evil. Now think about the love of God. The God who loves himself is love. You can't even compare the two loves. God's love is so much more above the love of humans. We were once far away from God, but God did something extraordinary. He drew us closer to himself. That is not the end. He also made us his children. Many people hear this and think it is just something normal, and they take this for granted. They don't know what it means for God to make us his children. 
God is not angry with you. Think of your own children when they do something bad. You tell them off or you chasten them, not because you hate them, but because you love them. And God does the same thing to us, his children. God does not chasten you out of hate. It is because he can see the destruction you are heading to. We have God as our Father, and we have nothing to be afraid of. No matter how careful you are, you will still be faced with challenges. It's the nature of life. That is the nature of this life. Most of the time, these challenges are like stepping stones to a greater level. Jesus said that we will have tribulations, trials. The truth is, is that there is no way we will live and be free from challenges or problems that can sink all our efforts or strength. John 16 verse 33 I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. If Jesus, the King of all, has already informed us of what is to come, he did that just to prepare us and to be strong instead of giving up. We are facing these things most of the times because the devil wants to go away from God. We face these things most of the time because the devil wants us to see God as our enemy. The one who doesn't care about us or care about the things we go through. The devil wants to snatch us away from God, but God is still faithful. He still loves us, that when we go far away from him, he will find us and bring us home. God will never leave us outside with the dogs and the roaring lions waiting to consume us. God will always look for us and bring us home because he is our father and he is always taking the responsibility of a father. God will send many things your way if you are going astray just to let you know you are going the wrong way and bring you home. God will always let you know the right way back home. That is the work of a father, and God is doing that. If a child doesn't come home, any decent father will go out there to find their child, and that is the same with God. He will come and find you. Most times we pray and we don't answer our prayer, and then one thing comes to our mind. We think God has forgotten us, and we start doubting him. We have lost our faith in him and all we could think of is finding another way on our own. The truth is, there is no other way outside of Christ. When I read the story of Hannah, a barren woman who got mocked frequently by her rival Penina, it got me thinking about what could have been the thought of Hannah every time she got mocked. Could it be that she blamed God for everything or could it be that it made her give up? The steps Hannah took made it clear that she did not give up, but she was strengthened. Hannah prayed until something happened. She got her child. This is the real character of the children of God. You can never see a child of God give up on God when they know who their father is. If you are giving up because people are mocking you, it is because you don't have the conviction that you have a father that can do all things, and that is God. God is in you. God dwells in you. You have the DNA of God in you, and that is why you will never have the spirit that gives up. Joshua 1 verse 9 Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is a message of hope to everyone who might be thinking that God has left him or her. God is telling you today that he will never leave you or forsake you. 
Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God is your Father and He is always with you. He doesn't have a tracker on you He uses to check on you. He is with you. God is in you. God is not blind. He is seeing everything you are going through. Regardless of what we face on earth, we should focus on God alone because when we think it's over, God is saying He is not done with us yet. Some things are common to man. One of the things that make people depressed and feel hopeless is because of what people have said about them. Listening to the negative comments of people and allowing them to get the best out of us will always make us feel hopeless. The most important thing for us as Christians to be concerned with is what God is saying about us and who we are in Him. What is God saying about me? What is my relationship with God or who am I with God? It's really good to examine ourselves and ask these questions. They are not rhetorical questions. They are questions that have answers. The way we think is different from the way God thinks. Isaiah 55 verse 9 As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We will always be human, and our ways are not perfect. Let people call you whatever they like. Just be concerned with what God calls you. Can I tell you what God is calling you? He is calling His child. The Spirit of God bears witness to this. Romans 8 verse 16 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. People can see you and call you a failure, but God is calling you His child. You don't belong to the devil, you belong to God. You are a child of God. By the new birth and being a child of God gives you privileges and benefits. My children don't have to ask to come into my house. They just come and go straight into the fridge to eat my food. Why can they do that? Because they are my children. No stranger will be able to come do that in my house. If you are a child of God, you can approach the throne of God with boldness. Hebrews 4 verse 16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Don't be afraid to approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy.